Hey guys, it's a passion from Asebi, and today we are going to talk about downgrade paths for American Express cards. So one thing to be aware of is that American Express does have a lot of cards, so there's a lot of ground to cover. If you do want a quick answer to your specific cards situation at least, I'd recommend going to the blog post down below. It's going to be the first link in the description box, that way you can kind of skim read instead of watching a long video. One final thing too is that American Express does have a once in a lifetime rule, meaning that if you've ever held a card, even if you did not get a sign up bonus, that's going to preclude you from getting a bonus for that card. So for example, if you apply for a card and then after one day you realize you don't want it, or if you downgrade to a card or upgrade to a card, it means that you're not going to be eligible for a sign up bonus for that card. In most cases, I recommend not product changing to a card, in this case downgrading, unless you've gotten a bonus for that card in the past before, or unless the bonus for that card is so immaterial that it's not really worthwhile. With that said, let's start off with Delta cards because I think that's kind of interesting example of this. So you have the Delta Blue, Delta Gold, Delta Platinum, as well as the Delta Reserve. We have this on both the personal side as well as the business side. One of the big differences though is that on the business side, there is no Delta Blue card. So here the benefit is that you can apply for the gold card, platinum card, or the reserve card in year one, get that sign up bonus, get the rewards, and then year two, if the bonus, if the card no longer makes sense for you, you can actually downgrade to that blue card. You're not missing out too much there just because with the blue card, the sign up bonus is typically about 10,000 points. So I would argue that it's relatively immaterial for a lot of people that's still $100 in value though. So again, it's kind of a balancing act. The advantage here though is that again, you can apply for that gold card, that platinum card, probably not the reserve card because I feel like that's more of a specialist card, but you get the idea. With business cards though, you don't really have this option. So you're stuck in a either keep it or cancel it situation where it either makes sense or you're kind of paying out of pocket for no reason. One thing to be aware of is that you cannot product change from a personal card to a business card or vice versa. So it has to kind of stay in its own little grouping. So whether it is a co-branded card into the specific co-branded group and also personal versus business. And in this case, it doesn't really matter, but if it's a charge card or a credit card, it has to kind of stay within its own grouping. It can't cross. Next, we'll move into the membership award earning cards, specifically the charge cards. So on the personal side, we have the green card, the gold card, as well as the platinum card. There technically is an authorized user gold card that's under the platinum card, but that's not really its own card. And again, that's very distinct and different from the gold card that you can apply for. So it's a bit confusing there. The easiest way to think of the authorized user gold card is that it's basically another version of the platinum card without as many of the benefits. One big thing with this grouping is that all of the cards do have annual fees. So you are in a situation where you either need to keep the card or to cancel it. You could argue that you can downgrade to the green card, but I feel like the green card of the bunch makes the least amount of sense if you look at the effective annual fee. So if you just look at the sticker price, yes, it's lower than everything else, but you're not really getting any other perks in terms of credits, in terms of travel stuff, in terms of monthly dining credits. It's just really hard to justify that annual fee given the lack of perks. For most people, this means either keeping the gold card or the platinum card, depending on their circumstances and the value they're getting. One question people probably have is why can't you product change this to the everyday card because that card also earns membership reward points. And the main reason is because these are all charge cards. You cannot on your end initiate a transfer in terms of a product between a charge card and a credit card. And again, vice versa, you can't do the same thing. You can't upgrade an everyday card to a platinum card. There are some weird exceptions to this, but it's not really something you can control. The only times that we've seen stuff like this happen is usually if American Express discontinues a product or if they end a relationship with one of their partners, meaning that they kind of have to move you over to another product and they'll kind of match you to the one that makes the most sense. But again, in most cases, you can't initiate it. You have no control over this. On the business end, we have the same cards as well. The one difference though is that the business gold rewards card is very different than the personal gold card. So for a lot of people, if you are someone who runs an e-commerce business, if you're running a lot of marketing spends, you actually can get a ton of value from that card, the BGR card. But again, just really depends on you. It's kind of a balancing act between that card as well as the business platinum card 
if you are looking to keep a specific card. Green card also in this case doesn't really make sense. On a note of the Platinum card, there are some co-branded versions, but you can't product change to them and you can't really product change out of them. So again, has to remain in its co-branded group. The thing too is that even within that group, given that there's oftentimes only one or two cards, you can't really do anything with because most of the lower one, the one that doesn't have an annual fee, tends to be a credit card and the expensive one is a charge card. So if you do want to get the Schwab Platinum card eventually, you are going to need to apply for it. You can't just upgrade to it. Staying within the membership award cards, we also have the everyday card as well as the everyday preferred card. And pretty straightforward there, you can upgrade and downgrade between these two cards. The everyday card is pretty interesting because it's the only no annual fee membership award earning card from American Express. All of the other ones do have annual fees. The Blue Cash Everyday and the Blue Cash Preferred have the same model. So again, BCE, BCP, upgrade, downgrade as you like. Speaking of blue cards, there is one called the Blue Business Plus card, but it's pretty much in its own group. You can't really product change into or out of it. Moving on to SPG, you have the SPG Normal card as well as the SPG Luxury card. So it is in a kind of a two family group. You can't really do anything else with it and both cards do have annual fees, but I would make the argument that both are keeper cards and depending on your circumstances, you are basically paying $100 for a lower tier free night or about $150 effective annual fee for a higher tier annual nights. For me, I'm actually looking to upgrade my SPG card into a secondary SPG luxury card just because I get so much value from those free nights and I use, I stay in Marriott's anyways, so I'm going to use that $300. For other people though, they're probably going to get the SPG, SPG Luxury, and then downgrade the SPG Luxury into a second SPG card. It just really depends on you and how you want to play it. The SPG Business card is by itself, but again, to me, it's a keeper card given the free nights. Moving on to Hilton, there are a lot more options here, but let's get the business one out of the way first. So there is a Hilton Business Ascend card, and that's pretty much by itself. Moving on to the personal side though, we have the no annual fee Hilton card, the Hilton Ascends, as well as the Hilton Aspire. So the interesting thing though is that with the Hilton basic card without an annual fee, I would argue that it makes sense to get that card first before downgrading to that card just because the bonus tends to be a bit more sizable. The other interesting thing here is that for some people, it might make sense to actually upgrade to a second or to a third Aspire card depending on how you travel and how much value you're getting out of that free nights. The main reason is because the Aspire card is a keeper card given the free night, the travel credits and stuff. Even with just the travel credits and the Hilton credit, you're pretty much breaking even on that card and technically coming out ahead, meaning that every year you're getting a free night. If for someone who's a college student who isn't really traveling, then that might not really make that much sense because that is a relatively high annual fee. But if you are someone who's graduated, let's say you are working as a developer in your first year in San Francisco, you're probably making 150 to 200. So that annual fee isn't really as substantive, especially if you want to do trips to places like Bora Bora. At the end of the day, the point of cards is to get more value back than you're putting in. So if you're paying a $450 annual fee, you want to make sure that you're getting something like $800 or $1,000 in value back. For the most part, those are going to be the core American Express cards. There are a lot of other cards that we haven't really talked about. For the most part, they're either not as interesting, or they're a bit more obscure, or they're grandfathered cards that people can't get anyways. So again, if you go on the benefits page of American Express, you can kind of see 50, 60 something cards. As a reminder, if you do like this content and you want to support the channel, pretty easy way to do that would be to use the links on our site or the links in the description box down below. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what's been your experience with downgrades and stuff or what is your thought process? So you typically go for the higher tier card and then downgrade to the lower tier one to look for keeper cards or do you maybe upgrade to cards given the kind of competitive landscape that we've seen with the SPG Luxury card as well as the Hilton Aspire card. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.